Next period, I'm gonna fail it straight up. Maddie Holman. Well, I'm literally gonna fail. I got last place on the field. Maddie Holman, Kayla Lear. Bailey Kine, Holman Hutchinson, Cody Kent, please come to the office. Oh, I got you. Walker. What? Walker. through a couple notes today. Um, I don't have everything written up here. Okay. Um, I'm going to hand out your practice test today. Do not let me forget that. So right when we're done with the notes, I'll give you your homework. I'll hand out the practice guide. We're going to go over the practice test tomorrow and Monday and then quiz, quiz, that's what I'm calling it, is on, is on Tuesday next week. I think it's pretty straightforward. It's not difficult. It's just you have to know what we've been talking about. It's kind of the homework. That's what it is. So it's, I think it's definitely manageable. Couple of every crown we've had. All right. So, um, big thing. We talked about Pascal Strangle yesterday. We're going to talk about that today. Especially if you were not here. I passed rank. Perfect. Okay. So we'll talk about that. The next thing we're going to discuss. We need to talk about examples of area and volume today. Area and volume. I want to make sure that we understand how that works. You know, like what type of problem I can give you with that, and that you know how to solve that. Um, they're pretty straightforward, especially area. Volume would be the only tricky problem, so I'll explain those, what I mean by that, uh, when we get there. Uh, and then we will have more today. So, and that'll be due on uh, Monday or Tuesday next week. Due Monday or Tuesday. September 12th, 13th. Whatever day you want to turn in, because I know we have the quiz on Tuesday, and some people like to turn it in, so they don't have to worry about it. So, And it's way less than that. That thing took a while. I know that. So this will be way less problems. Like less than half of what you just had there. So. Okay. All right. Any questions with any of the stuff we're going to talk about today? All right. Perfect. All right. Let's, uh, let's walk through some of the stuff here. Um, first thing. Let's talk about Pascal's triangle. 
Um, we're going to start with an easy problem. Just to make sure we understand how this works. Okay, how Pascal's triangle works. All right, um, so let's imagine that this is my problem, right? Most people know what the power of 2 means, right? Power of 2 means that you take two of the parentheses and you multiply it like this, correct? You have two of them. Don't, don't distribute the 2. The reason why you don't distribute, that, that's a binomial. If it was a single item, you could distribute the power of 2. But it's two items being added. You can't even add them, so you can't distribute power of 2 over it. You have to write it like this. And most people are very comfortable. They can just multiply this out, you know, foil, first outer, inner, last. That's fine. If you have a small power like a 2 or a 3, I'd probably consider just multiplying it out by hand. Make sense? Mm -hmm. You don't need to use Pascal's triangle. But I do want to show you with an easy one, and then we'll do a harder problem where we do Pascal's triangle. So uh, for the easy one, if we're doing first outer and last, 2x uh, times the 2x, that's what we're doing first. So you're going to take this item times these two back here. So 2x times 2x is what? 4x squared. 2x times 4 is an 8x. OK, do we understand the first two parts? Mm -hmm. I just read. OK, now I'm going to color code. So I'll go to the new color here. Now we're going to take the 4 times everything. And this is, this is basically foiling. It's just I'm writing it using distribution arrows. Uh, 4 times 2x is an 8x again. And then 4 times the 4 is 16. And now I can add and get my, my final results is when I combine like terms. And I get 4x squared plus 16x plus 16. And I know that, I think in Algebra 2, you guys learn these quirky rules for like um, perfect squares for like trinomials. Those are stupid. I don't memorize those. It's just, I foiled. That's all I do. I don't care. I don't memorize that. All right, so we come to with the first answer. Now, that's the old school way of doing it. Now, if you want to use Pascal's triangle, the triangle, if you don't remember what we talked about yesterday, let me get rid of this, just get it in the way. Uh, Pascal's triangle is this. So it starts with a 1, it goes 1, 1, two. Uh, and then, yeah, then it goes 1 on the outside. You add these two together, and then put a 1 on the outside. There's always 1s, like a tree. Then the next row, 1, add these together, add these together, and then put a 1 on the outside. And it's always getting one more number every time you do it down, right? Uh, let's see where my projector here. Maxwell's at 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. Yeah, so yeah, because um, 1 on the outside, 4. Right, four, six, four, one. Good. Next row after that. Five, ten, ten, five, and one. And you can keep going. You guys get the pattern how it works. Like you don't need to memorize numbers. You just know how I built them. How you go down. Okay. Now what these stand for? These are the powers that are on your parentheses. So what I mean by that is each row stands for a certain power that you put on your parentheses. So if your power was a zero on your parentheses, your answer is 1. That's your answer, is 1. Okay. If you have a power of 1 on your parentheses, you'll have each item is just by itself. It's just 1, it's just power of 1 on each one. So, I mean, you're not going to change anything. Um, if you put a power of 2, like what we have, now, now it's telling you, when you look at my triangle there, uh, my, my pyramid here, uh, there's going to be three answers. You can see it. There's going to be three answers you're going to get at the very, very end. And that's what we have. We literally have three things right now. And that's how this triangle works. It's actually helping you get your answer without having to do the old school way of multiplying. Okay? So let's go through it with this problem, because we have a power 2. Agreed? We'll try maybe a power 4 next. We'll try it bigger. So I'll just take the same problem to change to a power 4, so you can see how that works. Okay, so power 2. How this works, I'm going to write down these numbers. So we have the we have the, the 1, 2, and 1. I'm going to write those out and I'm going to spread them, right? So I'm going to, I'm going to write them on paper, spread them out like this. And you don't need to put that much space. I'm exaggerating what, how much space you need. Okay, now how this works. What are the two items in my parentheses over there? 2x, uh, the 2x plus 4, right? So I'm going to write this over here so we don't have to keep looking over there. All right. So these are the two items of the important things. These are the things we're going to be using for now. We're going to be using the 1, 2, and 1 here, but we're going to be using these two items for the rest of the problem. So how this works. The first item, I'm going to start with the 2x. right? And you're going to put the biggest power on your 2x. So what's your biggest power on this parenthesis? 
2, right? Square. So I'm going to put that square on the 2x. Okay? Then behind that, you're going to put the other number. What was my other number in that parenthesis? 4. And you're going to put the smallest power on it. What's the smallest power? Nothing. Nothing. Zero. And then put a plus sign. That's how it works. <clears throat> and you're going to keep going with the same exact pattern for the rest of the problem. So now, so now we're to the second number, right? We're at the 2. I'm going to write the 2x again, but now the 2x is going to go down in power. So if, if this was a 2 now, what does it now become? A 1. And the 4 now goes up a power. It becomes 4 to the 1. Does that make sense? The, the 2x's are going down in power, so the 4 is going up in power. So now, in the back now, because now we're to the second part, what is the power of my 2x now? A zero. It's counting down, right? The, powers of the two x are counting down. The fours are counting up. So now, what's my power on the four? A two. That's how it works. One number counts down. One number counts up. And now all I have to do is do the simple math that you see there. What's right next to each other, and it gives me the same answer that I have in the box over there. It will give me that four x squared, the sixteen x, the sixteen. It is guaranteed that it will work out that way. This works every time for the Pascal's triangle. That's just the pattern you follow. You just use the two items in the parentheses to do it. Okay, so uh, let's finish out this math. Uh, so we have the number one here. All right, what's 2x squared? That's 4x squared, right? Because you square each of the items. And now I take it times, what is 4 to the 0? Just a 1. So this turned out to be just a 4x squared. So that's good. So, so far, so good. Plus sign, we have 2 here. What's 2x to the power of 1? 2x. And 4 to the 1? 4, and now I can multiply these numbers together. So that's 4 times 4, which is 16x. Perfect. So far, so good. Over here, we have the 1 times, what's a 2x to the 0? 1 again. And 4 squared? 16. And 1 times 1 times 16 is 16. And guess what? It gives you the same answer without having to FOIL. Now, you're probably thinking, OK, that's, that's more work. It's just, that was more work than what you did. Like, I can do that faster. Yeah. But this is awesome when you have a power of 4, 5, 6, 7, 9. Right? Now you don't have to foil. Because I think, what, what was the problem we did yesterday that we talked about? Like, if I were to put a power of 7 on that beast, the thing would go across the board and have 128 items across. 128 items just for putting a power of 7 on this thing and not simplifying it as you go. <clears throat> I wouldn't even be able to get done by the end of today by working that. I'd probably mess up somewhere because the numbers would get too big. So that's why I, I avoid foiling when it's anything. Usually it's like past the power of 3, power 4, power 5, power 6. I don't foil anymore. I don't do that distribution thing. It's too much work doing, <coughs> doing foiling over like 3s and 4s. Okay? So does everyone understand how this Pascal's trying to works and it looks like? We're gonna try power four now. We're gonna try like a bigger power. So Question. Is that that's it? That's that's yesterday. how it works. Is that like that we learned yesterday? Yeah, that's what we that was the new thing we learned yesterday. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. So if you're gone, yeah, that's what we learned. All right. Uh, the video will be online today. I'm uploading it right now, so I know it takes time. But let's try it now for a bigger power, so we can get that practice. So we can see how the little number system works, how it counts down, how we use this little triangle thing here, because that's what you have to use. So. Um, let's create any power you want. I don't care. I think I, I hinted like I want to do like a 4 or 5 or something like that. We can do 7. I don't care. But um, let's just pick a different power now. Something bigger. 6. 6? Okay. Jeez. Okay. You guys want to go big. Fair enough. Let's do a 6. Okay. So we're going to do 6. Um, now, to give you an idea of what this would be, okay, because I do like to like justify why we would ever use Pascal's triangle. This means that I have 6 parentheses. Five, six. Okay, there'd be six, and then you'd have to foil the first two, and there, you know, since there's two items in that one, two items in here, right? There's the two x plus four, two x plus four. There's two <laughs> items. This would make four items across, all right? And then when when you get those four items, then you have to take a times the next parenthesis. So now you'll have eight items across the board, and then you'd have to take times the next parenthesis, and you have sixteen. Then you take times the next, and you'd have thirty-two, and then eventually you take times the last one, you'd have sixty-four items across the board, okay, all the way across. That'd be the final answer. Let's do this, right? Way, way faster. Way, way faster by doing this method. So I'm not even going to attempt to even start this. That's correct. I don't want to do it. So um, let's go to the next part. So this triangle. 
Um, let me hint, this is power three if you have a power three on it. This is power four if you had it. This is power five. So I gotta go one more step on your triangle. I gotta go one more row down to get my power six. So this is a one, six, 15, uh, what is 20. 20, 20, 15, six, and then a one. All right, that's the row I need because I have a power six. So I'm gonna need to go, yes, one, 6, 15, 20, 15, 6, oh, I don't have enough room. Oh. It's right over there. What? That's going to be awesome. All right. Oh, wow. 1, 6, 15, 20, 15, 6, well, no, I have a lot of space, but I'll make it work. Okay. Does everyone see those are my numbers from the Pascal's triangle? Does everyone know how I created that triangle? Let's go through the math. It's just like that setup I did over there. So what are my two items in this parenthesis? Check some part. This is the things I'm going to use. Whatever they are, I'm using those. So the first thing, I'm going I'm to use the 2x, and I'm going to use the 4, but now we just got to figure out what powers are going to be on it. So biggest power on the 2x, 6. The 4 will start with the smallest power, 0. And now they're just going to follow that same pattern, counting up and down, that type of thing, right? So for the next number, for the 6, I'm going to start with the 2x. It's going to have a 5. 4 will have a 1. We good? Okay. Plus, now we're going to go to the next one. What will the 2x have on this one? 4. The 4 will have a power of 2 now. Okay. Good. Now the 2x is going to have a 3. The 4 will have a 3. Um, the 15 will um, will have a 2x with a power of 2. The 4 will have now a 4. The 6 will have a 2x with a power of 1 and a 4 with a power of 5. And the last one, the 2x will have the power of 0. And the 4, whoa, the 4 will have a power of 6. I know it's ugly. I'm sorry. I had to make it fit. <laughs> so be comfortable so far with where I've got to. So whatever. Does everyone see how the two X's go down, the fours go up? Just waiting for people out so because I know it takes time to write this. Ugly, I squeezed it all in there. This is the part where I'll need somebody that has a good calculator. I, I can do some of the math, but I cannot do all of it. So Everyone's got it written. Uh, some people are still writing. We good? Yeah, I'm ahead. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, you guys are already working. All right. So let me let me work ahead. So we have the number one. Now two x to the sixth power. Two to the sixth power, um, I believe, is a sixty-four, and then that's x to the six, and then four to the zero is just a one. So this is going to turn out to be a sixty-four x to the six. Is there any questions with that part? That is the first term for my final answer. That's it. It's going to be 64x to the 6th. Okay, now, going to the second term now. And I'll try to color code as we go so I can kind of mix and match so I don't lose anything. I have 6. The 2x to the 5th, that'll turn out to be a 32x to the 5th. And that'll be times 4. So that is a 24 times a 32, which is a 8. Carry a thumb of 4. 0, that's a 12. <coughs> carry a 1, that's a 7. So that's an 8, 6, 7, 68. X to the fifth. That's six times thirty-two times four. Any questions with that second number? Did is anyone getting the same numbers as me? Okay. Fit, uh, the next part. Um, we're going to the middle term here. We're, we got fifteen. Two to the four or two x to the fourth. That's a sixteen um, x to the fourth times sixteen. Um, so. Geez, 16 times 16 is a... 3,840. Jeez, 3,840. Do you ever have problems on a test like this? No. No. Yes, we definitely... No, no. I can't. No, this takes too long. Um, it was all right. We good with that, that part. Okay, let's move on. Uh, what do we have? Blue now. Uh, we have a 20. 
Um, 2x to the third, that's going to turn out to be an 8x to the third. And then 4 to the third, that's a 64. So it's 160 times 64. 10,640. Say it again. 10,640. Jeez. X to the third. Holy moly, that thing's big. This is insane. You guys have to pick a six, didn't you? All right. Let's move on to the next one. Uh, we have 15, we have a 4x squared, and we have a 4 times, what, 16 times 16, is that 256? And then we multiply that all out, and we get 15,360. x to this x squared. Yeah. <laughs> Almost running out of space. Come back to green again. All right. Um, next one here. This is 6 times a 2x times a 4 to the 5th. I have no idea what 4 to the 5th is. 16 times 16, I think that's a... 1,024, I think. 1,024? Yeah. X. Okay. Are you going to take... That was just 4 to the 5th. Oh, that was just 4 to the 5th? Yeah. <laughs> 1,024 um, times 2, 2,048 times 6. 12,200. And the last one, this is pretty straightforward. We have a 1, and I'm at red now. Um, that's a 1 times a 1 times a 4 to the 6 power. 4,096. 4,096. <coughs> 4,096. There you go. That should be your answer all the way across the... Um, if you were to actually foil that thing. <coughs> yeah. Exactly. I'm not going to give extra credit for stupidity. <laughs> no. Alright. Any, any questions with that question? Because I mean, they're all positive. How do you know when to make a negative? Okay. Um, if, if any of these are negatives, it's because of the way that the powers work and the way that the numbers you're using. Like using a 2x or if that was like a negative 4 and you're plugging them in here, the powers should tell you if it's going to turn out to be positive or negative because of the way the powers work. Yeah. Usually like, um, like if it's an odd number, usually you'll have a lot of negatives, like it'll be kind of like every other kind of situation. If it's positive numbers like a six, usually the negative signs usually cancel out in the very, very end. That's just kind of how it works. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just, if you put the, the numbers in the right power, you'll get the negative numbers. That's, that's kind of what's going to happen. So, yeah, good question. I mean, if you want, we can do one where we put negatives in there so you can see it, so... The good thing is, um, the biggest parts you have in your homework that I assign is power three. So that's manageable. I mean, you can literally just do it by hand if you wanted to. You wouldn't have to foil and do Pascal's triangle. I'm just preparing you, because I know, I know there's problems with power sevens in your book. I know there's, I know that's there. I've seen it. I wouldn't want to do that problem, so that's why I chose to do that. All right, any questions with that, that problem? It's good. Did everyone kind of somewhat follow that? Okay, I know it's big. Just kind of a tough problem to look at. Okay. Let's talk about area and volume. This is the last two problems today. That's it. I'm going to end here. I want to be done in less than five minutes. Because this stuff is pretty straightforward. Okay, area and volume. Everyone knows area for rectangles um, and squares. So if we're going to find the area of one of these objects... Area of a rectangle or a square. Yeah. So area is just length times width. Now I know some people call it like base and height. It's the same thing. Don't don't be confused. So when you find area, you multiply those two numbers together. So area of a rectangle is equal to length times width. Okay. Now, why I'm bringing that up? Why I'm giving you that? It's because I know that there's going to be a couple of problems in your homework. They're going to ask you to find area of a certain box. That's not bad. You know, find area of a little box. But here's the thing that they do. They do this.
what you're looking at here. Flat, right, so like a map. Um, what I think of it is like you're looking at the top of a deck, like a deck in your backyard, okay? And there's gonna be, you're gonna do a cutout, we're gonna put like a little hot tub in there. You wanna find the area of what's left of the deck, with the shaded area. Does that make sense now? That I want the area of the shaded part getting rid of the deck, or getting rid of the hot tub. Exactly. You find the area of the two pieces, and then you just subtract them out. You just subtract the hot tub out, okay? Why you'd ever choose to do this? This is how you can estimate how much lumber you need for that project, how much wood you need to buy. So you don't have to go out and buy a ton of extra lumber when you can get down to the bare minimum number of board you need to have. So that's that's why they do this. That's the type of pre-calculus -calc type of question, okay? Um, like a contractor for a construction company would do this type of work. They estimate like bare minimum, what's the bare minimum number of supplies we need so they can give you an estimate on cost, what it's gonna cost, okay? That's the type of situation. It's easy, it's that, 20 times width. So for me, it's, just, it's two problems in one. I'm gonna find the area of the big piece, okay? And then I'm gonna subtract the area of the little hot tub. That's all I'm doing. So how do I find the area of the big thing? 4x plus 3 times 3x minus 7. Exactly. 4x plus 3, 3x minus 7. I just have to figure out that area. Whatever it is. It can be a polynomial. I don't care. And then once that's done, once I have that, then I'm going to subtract the small piece, which is the, the 2x plus 6 times the 3x. I'm just going to find that area. But notice what you're doing here. Why I chose this problem. You're foiling, and also you're subtracting. It's the two things we talked about this chapter. You know, we talked about adding, subtracting, plus multiplying. So it's a perfect problem where you mix it all together. So if you're going to do this, I'm going to foil this up just so you can see the answer. So some people like to see that. Okay, so foiling this out, I'm just going to do the first two parentheses. This turns out to be a 12x squared. Uh, 4 times the negative 7 is negative 28x's. Uh, the 3 times 3 is a 9x. And the 3 times negative 7 is negative 21. Um, so, yeah, I'll leave it like that. I don't really care. I'm just going to leave it. But everyone understand where I foil? Okay, now back here, I'm going to foil this. It's not a big deal. I'm just going to multiply. Um, I'm going to leave the negative sign where it's at. But I'm just going to multiply the 3x through. So this is going to turn out to be a 6x squared and then an 18x. Now, why am I choosing to write it like that? Why did, why did I distribute the 3x through and why did I leave a parenthesis on it? Because there's a negative 1 on yeah, I have to distribute the negative as well. So that's why I left the parenthesis on it, because I know the negative sign will have to go through there. And I'm going to choose to do that second. So, um, so on this problem, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to distribute the negative sign on it. So now this is a negative 6x squared and a negative 18x. So I like to always figure out the area first before I distribute the negative sign. And then up here, this is um, 19x minus 21. And now I can combine things. Okay. Any questions with so far with what I've done there? I'm not done, but any questions? I didn't lose anybody in the process of doing that? Okay, then I can subtract. So if I if I finish this problem out, I can subtract the you know the 12x squared and the 6x squared to make 6x squared, so positive. Um, negative 19 minus 18 more is negative what 37 x's. And then minus 21. Let me double check my math. I can't add and subtract my head. So, is that right? Then you need to. Okay. Can't add and subtract my head. Sitting alive. Okay, we good so far? Alright, now the last problem volume. It's the only difference. There's just volume is the same exact problem, but on the volume problem, now you have a depth going back. So you have the width, the length, and then you have a depth going back. Some people call that the height of the object. So when you find volume of an object, you multiply those three dimensions, length, the width, and the depth going to the back. So, so volume of an object, so let's draw this little mock picture of my little cube here, there's my little picture of my cube. You take length times width times depth. And sometimes they call the depth the height of it. I don't care what you call it. 
pay your debt. It doesn't make any difference to me. Now, what type of problem they're going to give you on those? Like, wh what possibly can they do? It'll be like um, how I describe this. It's like a Jenga piece. They're going to give you they're going to give you a solid block like this. It looks like a sugar a sugar cube, but you're going to have a missing Jenga block out of the middle of it. And they're going to ask you to find what the volume of the thing that's left. So let me draw my picture. Does anyone actually? Do you guys want this left here? Yeah. Okay. What about the Pascal's triangle? Let's see if I can fit I'll try to do this. Oh. I'll try to fit right here. So, okay. Da, da, da. Let's get rid of these dimensions. All right. So, let's put this in here. Okay. So, da, da, da. all right. So, uh, imagine we're, we're missing a Jenga piece out of it. So, I'm going to try to do the best I can to erase this Jenga piece that's out of the middle here. Can you guys get a glimpse of how that works? Like the Jenga piece that's missing out of the top, it's like a horseshoe. So, um, I tried to draw a three dimension, it's super hard to do that, I can't. Conceptually I can see it, but I don't know if you guys can. So just the little piece out of the top of the Jenga board is missing. Okay, so they're gonna give you dimensions. So, you know, two X plus one, three X minus five. The depth is a, um, just let's say this is just a, three plus x, and the dimensions here, let's say this is x and this is a x plus one. Three, three plus x also goes three. What was that? Three plus x also goes three. Yeah, so, yeah, so this is a good idea. So when you're doing this problem, the, the volume of the big thing, the volume of the big picture, there's my picture, it was terrible. All right. The volume of the big thing, you're taking the x, uh, sorry, the 2x plus 1, that piece, that's the bottom, that's the length. You're going to take that times the width, the 3x minus 5, times the, the height or depth, however you want to think of that, the 3 plus x, right? That's the volume of the big picture. Let me get out of the way so you can see that. Those are the three main dimensions. Make sense? The problem is, I need to take out the Jenga piece. So guess what piece I need to subtract out? I'm going to subtract the little volume little tiny piece. The little tiny piece's dimension, length, width, and depth. The length is the x plus 1, the, the width is just the x, and then the depth, what's the depth going back? Yeah, the 3 plus x. It's that same depth that you used before, it went all the way to the back. So you have to use the same depth, the 3x plus x. Do you see how that works now? So you're going to multiply the big volume, that's this is the dimensions of the big piece. <coughs> and then you subtract the little Jenga piece out. And that's this is the Jenga piece. Okay. Any questions with that so far? Okay. Let's figure it out. Let's see what we can do here. Let's see if I can solve this out. Um, I don't know if I have enough board space, but we'll try to multiply this out. So the volume of the top thing. Um, I'm going to have to foil this out, so I'm going to have to foil it first, too. So that's going to be, it's going to turn out to be a 6x squared, um, a negative 10x, um, a 3x, and a negative 5. All right, so that's the first two <coughs> multiplied together. Now i got to take this whole mass times the 3x, 3, 3 plus x, and that'll give me the volume of the big picture without <coughs> taking out the Jenga piece. Um, so this turns out to be a 18x uh, squared plus 6x cubed. So that's taking the 6 times the two things in the back. The negative 10 times each is negative 30x minus 10x squares. Now the 3x times everything in the back, so that's a 9x and a 3x squared. And... Negative 5, that's negative 15, and a negative 5x. All right, so there's the volume of the big picture um, without simplifying any of it. Oh my god, that's nasty. And now i got to find the volume of the small piece. So let me uh, transcribe this volume up here. So this is going to be the volume of the small piece. Here's the small piece. 
That was the x, x plus 1, yeah, 3 plus x. Okay, so. So now, the volume of the small piece now. I'm going to put this in black. Foiling the first two out, that's x squared plus x. And then taking that times 3 plus x, I need to foil that out. x squared times 3 is 3x squares. x squared times x is x cubed. Plus x times 3 is 3x. And an x times x is x squared. And that can simplify down. Okay, now, the thing in red is good to go. You can combine my terms. But what do I have to do with this piece? Subtract. You have to subtract it, right? I have to take the big red piece and subtract it from this piece. Okay, that means I have to distribute a negative sign over it because technically the problem now, if I actually simplify all that out, um, what's my biggest power? X cubed, um, 18, that's 8 plus 3, that's an 11x squared. So I have 6x cubed plus uh, 11x's. Uh, 11x squares, I should say. Um, uh, that's negative 21, um, negative 26x's. And what does this say? Negative 15. All right, so there's the big piece. And now I've got to subtract the small piece, this thing. And I'm going to combine all that. That's down to an x cubed, 4x squares, um, 3x. So I have to just distribute that. Did I lose anybody with how I did that? Sorry, I'm going all, like, all over the board on this thing. So you have to distribute and then combine like terms. And that will be your final answer. Okay, any questions with the two that I just gave you? All right, I'm going to give you your homework. Okay, homework is due Monday or Tuesday. I don't care which day you turn it in. I'm going to give you two, di two different days if you want. Um, I'll give you a little bit of time tomorrow. Once I do this, I'm going to hand you up your practice guide because we'll talk about the practice guide tomorrow and Monday. And you, if once we get through those, through those reviews, then um, you can always have time where you can work on this and stuff. Now, on your practice guide, I always collect those as homework. So I, I collect my grade and I give them back to you. We do them in class together, so you should get 100%. It's a nice, easy grade for you. So pretty straightforward. So, all right, page 53. Um, here's your problems. 9 through 13, odds. So, there's what, three problems there. Um, 18, 20, 38, 58, 78, 93 through 96, 107 to 109. The last two groupings, these are area and volume. That's all they're doing. The rest of them are just like the first three are adding and subtracting, the next couple are multiplying, so you have different categories of multiplying. So scalar, there's a couple of foil, there's a couple with powers. And then you're in the area in volume terms. So it's definitely less than half of that assignment, I can guarantee that. That that assignment is big. Okay, any questions today? Perfect. Have the rest of time to work, move around, do whatever you need to. I'm going to send a couple of yahoos. Well, let me hand out some practice guys. Burp's gone. Clevenger's gone. Clevenger's gone. Spencer. I know that those guys are gone. Right. So here's your, here's your practice test. I didn't staple it, sorry.
You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that's what I thought. That's what I thought her purpose was. Like, so what's that? Six percent. What was this interview about? This is due on the day we take the quiz. You'll have it done on Monday because we'll yeah, review the first six. first page yeah. tomorrow. Mm -hmm. We do the second page on for, on Monday, yep. and it's done. And then Tuesdays are quiz. Okay. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. So what we do is we just I, I just basically walk through how do you do those problems. Uh, I'll let you have time where you can work on getting answers. You can check to see if you're right or wrong. I give you time to work on the class. That way you understand like this is what I'm going to have to be able to do. Now obviously your test. Your test looks identical to this. I mean it is literally identical. There is there is going to be you know 24 questions. Okay. It is all I did was pick different numbers to put in there or a different problem from your homework. You probably recognize these. They're literally homework problems you had. Sure. You saw them. You're going to see them today. That's all I do. That's all I do on the test. I just pick different homework problems that are right next to them. No. Yeah. What are we doing? Yes. Okay, did you get one of these? Yeah. yeah. Can I have someone hold it for a second? Yeah. It's so hard. Who's me? So you put it in there. You're just pretty good. Yeah. And then you repeat the test, and it's not what you're saying. And now he only studied the antonyms and antonyms. He didn't study like definitions. But Anthony? Yeah. He's so dumb. I know. Why would you study the same as he did? He thought that was what the test was going to be. But he didn't put the same as he did. So you. Yeah, there's, there's, the there's literally like three of them, like and you can just cross out the words, so she uses each word for us. Oh, yeah. Yeah. She, she yeah. just cross out the words and you just like the, yeah. What? That's the vocab. That's it. How many questions do you like? Four, like four, ten four. matching vocab. Ten and then uh, over ten. So yeah, it's one. ten matching ten, vocab. Then five. And then five. just five. Five, 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 five yeah. So, Yes. Is that all yesterday? Yeah. Yes. We just did the Pascal's triangle and talked about that multiple times. So it's very deep. We spent a long time yeah, talking about how that thing works. Okay. Because that's intimidating. Yeah, it's big. It's still like, it gives you options. It's literally like, it's all multiple choice. Yeah. It's so easy. It's like carbon copies. He's good. He's good. He's gonna just fill him in. He's gonna make sure he puts the right one in his own. As long as he's studying, you don't have to put it in his own. She gives you multiple choice. It's multiple choice. She no. Yeah. Yeah. So she gives you a sentence with a blank in it. Oh. And then so you, you put A. Like, that's nice. Yeah, it's nice. It's nice. That's nice. I need some, some nice. That's too good. Yeah, I'm too good.